started at Campbell in 1999. So I've been through three different visits. And the, what was certainly happening with the, this one was very different in that the standards were measuring things differently and the emphasis was moved away from inputs to outputs and that now faculty had to wrap their head around what those changes meant to them and people had to figure out how they were going to become owners of that information. And it's like in, like in anything, sometimes moving, moving the herd in the, in the direction can be difficult, uh, but in our case, while there were some stumbles, I think, at the beginning, we were certainly able to get everybody behind uh, the process and begin to learn the process and to see that our measures were going to be much different than what the measures had been before, but that it was an exciting time because the outcomes were, were meaning that we were able to showcase our, our candidates as, as completers who were gonna be out there and be trustworthy and that local LEAs would be excited about getting them. And my thought after having reflected on this entire process is the benefit of the CAPE standards, although at first glance it's very, you, you feel obligated to meet every piece of the CAPE standards. But if you step back and having gone through the process, we find that we really determine that evidence that is going to be considered for review. So we're painting the picture that we want CAPE to see of our program. So now having been through that, we understand we're really in the driver's seat of this whole process where we felt maybe initially like CAPE was driving us and we felt really compelled to meet those standards and every word in them. And now we really understand the big picture of them and we're able to provide the evidence that we think fits that some advice that we thought of, and um, as we're getting asked questions now that we've been CAPE approved, starting early, you know, you have the timeline of the work that needs to be done for sure, but making sure that you are starting early, you are holding people accountable to the work that needs to be done, but you also have kind of a checks and balances system, I think, because we had some changeover in staffing in the middle of our self-study process and getting our feedback reports, and so, we're a smaller institution, but we didn't have kind of a backup plan for when those people left. So then our new faculty came in unfamiliar to the CAPE standards and the process. And so having a, a system and a checks and balances and making sure you give yourself enough time to really do the work to lead into your self-study so that you don't have as much work with your addendums and feedback reports and all that. I think one, the one thing that CAPE has really, I think, tried to do is bring education to, at least public education, to a crossroads where they're saying, we're going to have to make some serious changes. Um, in the past, we could build schools and people would flock to them and they would become teachers and it all worked out. Uh, right now, we have a situation where uh, CAPE included quality assurance in there for a reason. And this means that standards and measures and, and outcomes, all of this mean that the pool of individuals who are going to make it through these programs will be smaller. Uh, the need is, is, is there still for more diversity. So while at a crossroads we're wanting these types of really serious changes, it all is also is occurring when we have a real paucity of people who are who are, are wanting in, in the programs and into this, into this world of work. So if we're, as a, as a nation, as states, as, as even colleges of education or schools of education, mm -hmm. we're really at, a, at an interesting time, most exciting time I think I, I can remember in 30-some years in this business. So it's really exciting.